If you played a Super Nintendo in the early to mid 90s, you most likely gamed on a CRT television. The aspect ratio of the TV was 4 to 3. Pretty simple. But what about today? How should you play a SNES on a widescreen fixed pixel display? You could just stretch it across the entire screen. Perhaps you're either naive when it comes to aspect ratios, or you just don't care. And that's fair. But for some people, there is an aspect ratio rivalry for the Super Nintendo and other retro platforms. It snuck into existence with the advent of emulators and their rise in accuracy and convenience. Rather than duplicate the 4 to 3 experience seen on CRTs as in the Super Nintendo's heyday, some emulators have elected to default to the SNES's internal 8 to 7 aspect ratio. Many users are unaware of a discrepancy, and several others acknowledge the difference and actually prefer the slimmer option. So how did we get here? Unlike a fixed pixel display that uses a grid of pixels to display an image, a CRT television paints the image across and down the screen really fast. The TV is not limited by a precise number of pixels in the display. The video provided by the Super Nintendo has each pixel, or sample, drawn horizontally for a bit longer as the CRT paints the image. This is what gives the SNES graphics that stretched appearance versus the raw art scene when viewing the resources in an emulator. The number of pixels involved in the makeup of the image is irrelevant thanks to how the image data is painted to a CRT television. I left out the technical explanation behind all of this. I'm simplifying. You could do a lot of reading regarding the how and why behind display devices and video signals. If the subject interests you, I encourage you to read more. However, the short answer is that 256 by 224 isn't going to appear on a 4x3 CRT with perfectly square pixels, and this is by design. One popular Super Nintendo emulator that defaults to the 8 to 7 aspect ratio with square pixels is SNES 9X. In the earlier days of emulators, it was a lot less taxing on your computer's CPU of the time to skip software-based stretching. You could manually finish off the scaling process by using your CRT monitor's controls to stretch the on-screen video. With today's computer speeds, fixed pixel displays, and higher resolutions, the stretching is handled by the emulator software, but SNES 9X still defaults to 8 to 7. Meanwhile, some emulators, such as Hygen, currently default to a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. So what should it be? How should it be displayed? Stretch to 4 to 3 like it was originally seen, or argue that that stretch was just a necessary evil of the hardware at the time? Is 8 to 7 the proper aspect ratio? Let's take a look at some games. Super Metroid is one example that shows why some prefer 8 to 7. The Morph Ball power-up is naturally intended to look like a round ball and appears as such prior to stretching. After stretching to 4 to 3, the Morph Ball has more of an elliptical shape to it. Chrono Trigger is a counterpunch favoring 4 to 3 and demonstrates Square's awareness of the inevitable stretch of the title's graphics. To compensate for the stretch on the display, the art assets, like those used in this scene, are squished horizontally so that the eventual stretch would result in a circular moon. Power-up on Super Mario All-Stars shows a coin with Mario's face on it. Since 8 to 7 shows the proper circle, it appears the horizontal width for the coin graphic was not squished like in our Chrono Trigger example. Mortal Kombat 2 is like Chrono Trigger and squished the stored image horizontally so it appears to display proper circles when stretched to 4 to 3. These four circle based examples demonstrate favorites for both the 4 to 3 and 8 to 7 aspect ratios of the Super Nintendo. Let me address one additional argument and briefly mention one conundrum. Link Sprite in the Game Boy Advance port of Link to the Past has been cited as evidence that the graphics for the Super Nintendo were designed to be seen in an 8 to 7 aspect ratio. The reasoning behind this is the observation that the sprite on GBA matches the counterpart on SNES when viewed in 8 to 7. The conclusion was that the port on GBA demonstrates the intended look for Link. 
I don't consider this to be an argument favoring 8-7 as much as I see it as a technical hurdle and honestly, indifference. I'll explain. The screen type has changed to LCD and pixel stretching is no longer available. If you want to stretch on an LCD, you flat out need more pixels, ideally a lot more pixels. And the horizontal resolution of the GBA is pretty much the same as the SNES. So, if you were to attempt to show Link as he was on the SNES at 4 to 3, your scaling challenge is to widen Link from 16 pixels to a calculated 4 to 3 transformation equivalent while still using that same low horizontal resolution. It is not going to work. My conclusion is that if they wanted to do a 4 to 3 SNES look on the GBA, they would have had to redesign all the sprites and still wouldn't have come close to the SNES look due to the low resolution. It would have just been a large cost that was a waste of time. And then there is Super Game Boy. Now you have an example of games originally seen on a screen with a 10 to 9 aspect ratio being played window boxed on a SNES and obviously inheriting the SNES's stretch to 4 to 3. An 8 to 7 aspect ratio SNES would make more sense here, but the situation is rather unique. If you are emulating Game Boy games, you are probably using a dedicated emulator. If you are looking to play a Game Boy game on a TV or a monitor, there are other options aside from the Super Game Boy. The topic itself most likely demands a separate video. The purpose of this examination of aspect ratio is to increase awareness of what the Super Nintendo looked like on consumer sets in the 1990s, not all emulators emulate this appearance by default, and the modern era of retro gaming most likely gives you a choice. Many emulators can be configured to choose between 4 to 3 or 8 to 7. The Retron 5 has an option to force original resolution. The XRGB FrameMeister has scaling and zooming options. Consumer CRTs often have knobs or menus available to adjust horizontal or vertical size if necessary. And there is always gaming on an old TV or professional video monitor. Perhaps the most surprising support comes from Nintendo's Virtual Console on the new 3DS. An 8-7 mode is available via the Perfect Pixel Mode feature. The 3DS has a fixed pixel display with enough horizontal resolution to simulate the 4-3 stretch. The option allows for an easy switch on the fly depending on user preference. Even if you will always prefer 4-3 over 8-7, Stretching a Super Nintendo to 4 to 3 on a fixed pixel display is only as good as the methods and devices used to scale the image. With the release of the NES Classic Edition, Nintendo has included Pixel Perfect as a selection for display output. While the 4 to 3 aspect ratio is available, the scaling process produces visual artifacts during horizontal scrolling. The choice is available, and I imagine it is likely that a SNES Classic would provide the same options should a unit be released in the future. And that's aspect ratio for the Super Nintendo. Thanks for watching.